Hola YouTube, Sok Jazza. On the 1st of October, citizens living on the northeastern part of the Iberian Peninsula running across the border with France vote on whether or not they are going to become an independent country. To understand why the people of Catalonia want to be independent from Spain, we're going to have to do a little bit of a history lesson. Catalonia and Spain were fused in 1469 when Ferdinand of Aragon, which is modern day Catalonia, and Isabella of Castilla y Leon got married. They were so young and cute. He was 17, she was 18, and then they went on to conquer the rest of Iberia. <laughs> It was actually quite Game of Thronesy for its time. Both regions maintained their own institutions, governments and administrations until 1714 when a load of complicated war stuff happened because a king died. The point is that Aragon, and therefore Catalonia, then subsequently got scooped up into the administration of Madrid. Catalonia, however, did manage to maintain its own traditions, customs as well as its own language, which is lovely. Mole bear. Fast forward until 1939 and this guy, Franco, rules Spain as a dictator until his death in 1975. All you really need to know about him is that he's a right arsehole, essentially. He was best friends with Hitler and let the Nazis practice bombing raids on his own people, which got Picasso to end up making this very powerful and moving painting. And he also stopped the Catalans from being able to practice their own traditions and speak their own language. It was just a bit of a dick, really. Fast forward again to the late noughties, which is really a decade that we need to come up with a better name for. And the Spanish have had democracy for a good few decades. Catalans are allowed to speak their own language, felicitats. And Catalanness uh, is celebrated and taught throughout the region. At this point, Catalonia is one of the richest regions of Spain with its own regional government. The financial crisis hits and... I mean, Spain's economy pretty much goes tits up. Uh, the Catalans get pissed off subsequently on how much money they're having to pay to central government in order to prop up poorer parts of Spain. In 2014, 300 years since they were absorbed into the rest of Spain, Catalans were invited to vote in an advisory poll to gauge public appetite for independence. Votes in favour of independence won in a landslide. Over 80% of the ballots cast said that they wanted to be an independent country. But this was with turnout at a very low level of only around 40%. In 2015, don't worry, we're nearly done, there's a regional election in Catalonia. Most of the pro-independence parties decide to join together in an alliance in an effort to try and get a majority in government. This alliance actually succeeds, getting 53% of the seats in Parliament, but they get this with only 47% of the popular vote. Basically, in 2015, more people in Catalonia voted for parties that wanted the region to remain part of Spain, but because of the voting system, pro-independence parties ended up getting most of the seats. These pro-independence parties then seized the opportunity and called the referendum that we're now talking about. <sighs> Interestingly, if you live in Catalonia, where you stand on the question of independence very much seems to be cultural and linguistic. For those with Catalan as their mother tongue, 75% want Catalonia to be an independent country. For those with a language other than Catalan as their mother tongue, including, of course, Spanish, 75% want Catalonia to remain part of Spain. Though, wherever they fall on this question, 70% of people in Catalonia want there to be a referendum to put this issue to rest, because frankly, wouldn't you be exhausted by talking about it for all of these years? But just so that we're clear, this referendum taking place is technically illegal. Uh, the Spanish constitution states that it will uphold the indissoluble unity of the Spanish nation. Um, when that was ratified in 1978, after the dictatorship and in the transition to democracy, 90% of Catalans took part in that vote and agreed to it. However, the Spain that we see before us now is very different to the one that had just come out of a Franco dictatorship in 1978, especially in Catalonia, where their culture, traditions and language had been repressed for over 30 years. And what's more, over half of the people who now live in Catalonia weren't even born in 1978. 
the demographics have just changed hugely. There is another legal aspect that we have to consider, and that's the fact that Catalonia, whenever it wants to change its status and its relationship with the rest of Spain, it has to get a majority of two-thirds in Parliament in order to pass that legislation. Um, and this declaration of um, uh, this referendum for independence only got just over 50% of the votes in the Catalan Parliament. To be frank, this whole scenario has turned into an absolute shit show. The central Spanish government uh, have used force to crack down on protests, um, federal police have been stationed in Barcelona to aid with this crackdown, some of them being housed uh, on this cruise ship, which is hilarious, but also briefly led to Tweety Pie becoming a symbol of Catalan scrappiness, uh, resourcefulness, hope and independence. <laughs> Another good meme. Ballot papers intended to be used on the 1st of October um, have been seized en masse, websites have been shut down, and one of the things that makes me most uh, concerned and frankly outraged is the fact that people, officials, who were trying to coordinate this referendum have been uh, arrested and thrown in jail by the central Spanish government. In 2017, in the European Union, which is meant to be this bastion of democracy, an example of democracy, especially these days, we have political prisoners who have been thrown in jail for the same reason that people are thrown in jail in places like China, Azerbaijan or Hong Kong, because they want the people to be able to decide who it is that represents them and makes the laws that they are governed by. And this outrages me even more because this is with a population where a large number of them have a living memory of when their culture and their traditions and their language were repressed. And now it seems to be happening again. And non so catala, but that chills me to the bone. In a last ditch effort to do anything, uh, people were doing I'm going out and like handing out physical ballot papers because a lot of the IT systems had been seized by the Spanish central government as well. Um, uh, last night, I'm filming this on the day of the vote, uh, loads of like uh, families and brilliantly loads of old people as well um, were uh, occupying uh, schools and polling stations. Um, this is some footage from uh, a, a town just outside of Barcelona that my friend lives in. Um, uh, and apparently the feelings there were optimistic and, and great because they, uh, the reason that they're there is to stop the police from um, barring the designated polling stations and stopping people from being able to get in and actually vote. And so they're occupying those spaces. Uh, this morning, on the morning of the vote, there have been huge masses of people uh, waiting to be able to cast their ballots. Um, and there have been images of uh, violence um, uh, and scuffles with the police and people who want to vote. And there has have been images of uh, violence and people being injured as well. What's heartbreaking is that the uh, persistence and the determination with which people have tried to pursue the right to actually take part in this vote, and people who are pro-independence and people who just think that they should be able to partake in this form of democracy, um, has just been scuppered at every single turn. No matter what happens today, because of the efforts of the central government to invalidate this vote, this vote can't be seen as, as uh, democratic because of the amount of people that are going to not be able to take part because of crackdowns and because of people being scared of going to polling stations. If you saw people getting beaten up like this, would you go out and risk your your health and your life? Like, for goodness sake. That's what really pisses me off. The man won this time around. Hmm. This vote could have been democratic. It could have been valid, but a weak Madrid government is too scared to allow the people that it's meant to be representing a choice as to who actually ends up governing them. And that's what really actually worries me, is that what happens when you deny a democracy, democracy. And we are soon 
going to find out. Thank you so much for watching. I talk about politics and controversial stuff on YouTube, and as such, YouTube often demonetizes my content. Like, I, most of it gets demonetized. This video will probably be demonetized. Um, as such, I kind of rely on the support of my patrons, and they're running across the bottom of the screen now. They give me like a few dollars or so per month in order for me to be able to continue making these videos. Thank you to them. If you would like to join them, then, you know, pop on over, say hello. I also have a podcast where I talk with my co-host Jimmy um, uh, about these kinds of political issues in more depth. Uh, if you'd like to check that out, then uh, clicky there or find in the description below. It's very good, I have to say. Finally, make sure you subscribe. This is my subscribe face. It's over my face. Uh, and then also video there that YouTube thinks you'll also like. <coughs> Sorry, gassy.